everybody. How you doing today? I admit I was kind of running behind and I was just like, oh, dang it. And at uh, 1229, I started rushing and got my streaming computer on and stuff and got it on just in time. So we're <laughs> still on schedule today. Um, this was this was my first day in literally weeks where I didn't have any morning meetings. And so I took the liberty of sleeping in until 930 for the first time in forever. And uh, I've been just kind of very slowly getting tasks done today. But hello, hello, everybody. Good group crew today. Um, I've been starting this series at work of uh, using Next.js with various CMSs, and so the first one I released this week was Contentful, and then next week I want to release a Prismic blog post, and then I'm going to do like Sanity and Strappy and just as many CMSs as I can really think of before I get bored with the concept, but it should be pretty fun. Hello, friends. You didn't even get to sleep in even though you were off work. No. You gotta sleep. Am I using GraphQL with Contentful? Uh, with that one, I didn't. I just used a, a simple fetch command and, and pulled in the data. But with Sanity, I might do some more GraphQL stuff. Um, so we'll see. It's, it's definitely like early enough in the series where I'm kind of just like, I just got to get these done. And then after a while, I can uh, do a bit more work uh, uh, customizing them and stuff. You use Contentful at work? At, uh, yeah, um, Contentful is really nice. I was pleased with it. I was glad that I started with that one because it was a very nice ease into it because some of these are not simple CMSs to set up. Um, and so, uh, oh, if you want to use it with Next, I could find my blog post if you're interested. It truly just pulls some onto a page and you can be like, this is how you do it. Um, but what's, what's nice about it is you can fetch it kind of wherever you want in the application. And so what I did was I put it in the next function, get static props. Um, and then in doing that, it fetches it at build time so that when you load the page, the user doesn't have to wait for posts to load. And then I added a webhook so that way um, it would rebuild the site every single time a blog post or something is added. So it's kind of fun do some ancient CMSs, early 2000s stuff. I've gotten a lot of requests to use Drupal, and I'm like, please no, but <laughs> there have been enough requests where that's that's later on the end of the list. I'll, I'll consider that one later. If I had a ch to choose one learning site, Frontend Master, Scrimba, Egghead, or other, well, I'm a little biased about Scrimba because I do teach on it, but, um, they all have really, really good ones. I think it kind of depends on how you prefer to learn. Because with front-end masters, it's like being in a workshop where someone is speaking at you and you're following it. Um, and then with Scrimba, you kind of have to stop and do the exercises. And, and I really liked how it's kind of active learning where you the instructor stops and you write code and then you keep going. Um, and then with Egghead, those are really nice just snippets of everything you can possibly imagine. And so it's hard to choose because it depends on you and how you prefer to learn and, and your kind of goals with learning online. The problem with project is too big. You're having a problem with the recursive component. <laughs> um, any thoughts on .NET Blazor? I have no thoughts at all. I know Tom Zors is in this chat though. He probably has thoughts. He's a .NET buddy. He used to work on Drupal. I don't blame you for being hesitant. Yeah, I like, it's powerful. I know it's powerful. And there are some really cool things that some of our customers at work are using with it. And so I'm just like, that's great. That's awesome. Good for you. It's not my cup of tea, but eh, we'll see. What's the longest I've worn these in one sitting? I've worn them all day before. What I like about them is because they're so comfy, like they're, they're really, really squishy. And so they're comfy to wear with glasses. Um, and I typically wear glasses. I was actually thinking about switching because my contacts are a little janky today, but hey, um, they're really, really comfy with glasses and, and I really like that because I wear them all the time. Um, I've heard that there's some, oh, what is it called? There's, there's a brand that starts with a B that's really, really comfy for all day wear. One second, I'm doing a very quick search 
I, I don't know why I just started searched for B headphones. That was dumb. Um, but there, there's this one headphone brand that's supposedly crazy comfy for all they wear. But for these, I've been, I've been happy with them. I found them more comfortable than the Sennheiser X or 6XXs. I do have those and I like them, but these are more comfortable for me for all day wear. And that is very, very likely because I have a big head and <laughs> I need something that can handle my big head. The other ones kind of squished my face. Bayer Dynamic, that's what they were. The thing is, I wanted to try those Bayer Dynamics, but they're expensive, so I haven't. But anyway, I like them. Uh, let's see. Not really on Blaze where they haven't played with it. Oops, sorry Tom for calling you out then. Um, yeah, the Sennheiser 6XXs, they, they, they are really light and I love how they sound. They're great, but uh, these are comfier with my glasses because I'm a big head. Have I seen the new Moonlander? Yes, it looks so pretty. Um, someone, someone in my Patreon Discord, Spara Joy, she, uh, she uses it, and um, dang, it looks nice. And she was saying she has small hands, and so she like used the upward tilting thing for the thumbs, and so it was really nice for her to type with those. Um, so I'm curious about them, but I haven't used them myself. Hello. You have a giant head, and the Sennheiser HD 650s are really comfy all day. Oh, that's good. Nice. Like, I, I do wear the, the Sens regularly. I mean, uh, not since I moved, because again, temporary place where most of my stuff is packed away, so that's why I just grabbed these, because they'll, they'll work. But, um, yeah, they're comfy. I like them. I got a rotation. Brazil loves me. Wow. Obrigada. I don't speak Portuguese, but I know how to say thank you. And pastéis de nata, but that's more, that's more of a Portuguese thing and less of a Brazilian thing. <sighs> so how are you all doing? What projects are you working on? Does anybody need any react tips or next tips or a distraction from your work? Because <laughs> that's what I would be doing today. It's been, one, it's been one of those days where I've just kind of been, oh, from Turkey, wow. Um, it's one of those days where like, because I slept in, I'm kind of just like, it's basically Saturday. I might as well just chill all day, even though I have a lot to get done. Uh, and so it's it's a weird day. Distraction, please. Ooh, dancing. Uh, you're fixing performance issues with a site you didn't develop. Oh no, I'm so sorry. You have to create slides and I hate it. Oh no, I'm so sorry. So are you teaching the course? That's... Teaching courses is very fun, but when you're in the middle of working on it, it is the most tedious thing ever. I rejoiced when I was done with my scrimba class because I just didn't have to deal with it anymore. Um, like, it's very fun to teach, but I, I prefer this kind of, like, live thing where I could say, oh, you want me to explain that? Blah, blah, blah. But when you record it, it has to be done well, and it's developing curriculum can be pretty tedious, but it's fun to teach, so... Pick your poison. You settled at your new job. Wow, cool. So glad you went with the dance rather than the Yorkshire accent again. Sue me for not knowing how to do a Yorkshire accent. I don't even, I'm not gonna try. I don't need to be insulted by you Brits again. Um, do you have any good resources that deal with accessibility in React? You know, you should check out Reach UI. Um, they, Use TypeScript and React to make stuff. Um, I think it's just reach.tech. Yeah, reach.tech. I'll put the domain in there. Um, they do a really good job with just taking care of every single use case when it comes to accessibility. And um, Chance, the developer, not the rapper, um, and Ryan Florence, they primarily work on it. and. Uh, they have, they have some really cool content on how they've been developing it because they developed like a whole state machine driven thing for how to actually put these components together. And just for like a simple combo box, all of the different cases, Teha types, whoa, fam, thanks. Good, good to hear from you. Um, I'm not as legit as a streamer as you, but I appreciate you being around. Um, 
But anyway, they, they do a lot of really good stuff for accessibility and talk about all the different uh, cool things. And yes, Marty, Marcy Sutton um, has a great course on React as well. She's, she is absolutely great. Oh, so many things. You have some Haskell videos. Ooh, yeah. Uh, recording with quality is hard. It's, it's, a, it's a whole new world. Um, what kind of libraries do you use when working with a React project? Do you recommend TypeScript? I personally don't use TypeScript. Uh, if I can help it, you can. Um, I, I personally just prefer JavaScript. If it's going to be a really massive project that multiple people are using, I feel like that is an excellent case for TypeScript, and it's really good for just catching little bugs like that. I don't like using it if I can help it. Uh, typically, I try not to use any libraries at all. I do vanilla React, um, styling with CSS modules, that kind of stuff. And then if I'm using more of a framework, I'll, I'll use Next.js. Um, best methodology for testing a React app? Uh, React testing library is good. Typically, I do unit tests for uh, things like utility functions and, and specific hooks. And then I'll use Cypress or some other similar thing for doing more integration and end-to-end -end testing of everything. Um, what do I think about Svelte? I haven't used it yet, but it seems cool. It seems trendy. I haven't used it, so I can't really speak to it. It's, it's one of those things on like my never-ending list of things that I should learn this at some point, but I just haven't. What do I think about the Gatsby scandal? Okay. Communities are hard, first of all, prefacing all of that with that. I, I am not as involved with the Gatsby community, so I can't speak super intelligently to it, but what it sounds like is poor communication happened and people treating other people as if they were software projects and not like people. And, and that, that often is the downfall of most communities. And I'm not saying that Gatsby is going into a downfall. It is still increasingly popular. It's, it's one of the most popular React frameworks out there, one of the most popular JavaScript frameworks out there, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I appreciate that they did like an open letter to the community and that they're trying TBD. I'm, I'm kind of just trying to be patient and, and observing from afar because uh, communities are hard. So I know how hard it can be when you aren't, um, when you're trying to build software and also trying to build a company and also trying to build a community and, and making them all work together. Um, uh, I'm not saying that's an excuse for any behavior towards certain people at all. Not at all. Um, I'm just saying that I hope things get better. Um, let's see. CSS and JS or SCSS? I mean, here, here's, here's the reality. I or in JSS. I, I prefer CSS modules because I can write CSS files that then I can programmatically add and manipulate and stuff in JavaScript. I don't like writing CSS in my JavaScript. I like keeping them separate as just separate concerns. Um, what scandal? If you, if you look up just like Gatsby open letter and various people who've worked at Gatsby, you can see more of the information. Except the Cassidy community, which is super chill. Yeah. Um, and I don't, the, the, I think that's just the result of a lack of politics because if people get mad, I'm just like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I can really do. Um, working with a bug where Firefox and Chrome render things differently. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, what actually happened, the open letter didn't actually explain anything. So because I'm not involved, I want to be careful about what I say because I don't know the whole story. I only know parts of some stories and parts of specific people's stories. So what I know is that people were let go with questionable reasoning. Like, like I don't fully, it doesn't seem like they were justified to be let go in addition to uh, the Gatsby company trying to uh, kind of separate 
the company from the community when they should be integrating with the community. And so a combination of those things are mostly what I know about. Um, yeah, there were there are a few threads on Twitter that you should look at because they can speak more to it and more personally to it than I can. And I'm I'm not trying to avoid the subject. I truly just I know what I have read. Um, do you use vanilla JS for something that React has a solution for? I mean, sometimes. Um, like last week, uh, I was on the Twilio stream, and on the Twilio stream, I used vanilla JS to solve a problem. And it kind of made me wish, oh, I wish I was using React because I could just render this on the screen, yada yada. But uh, eh. I, I, I use vanilla JS for quite a few things. Like my personal website, is that's in vanilla JS. Um, and that's at casadoo.co if you want to check it out. I meant to put more links in the thing below the video today. And literally, I, I was like making these cute little graphics and crap. And then I saw the time and I was like, oh my gosh, it's 1228 and I had to like switch computers to this computer for streaming and stuff and making sure that it worked. So anyway, I'll get those links up eventually, but I, I like vanilla JS as well. Um, teach about unit testing. I could do that. Maybe I'll, I'll bring someone on who is more of an expert because I like it and I do it, but uh, I'm not, I've, I've never just straight up taught testing before. I've taught testing concepts rather than testing itself because it, it's a bit, it's a lot of, it depends. So have I read any of Nadia Eggball's new book? I haven't yet, but I ordered it and it went to my parents' house. So I have to go get it eventually, but I'm actually in that book. So I should read it at some point, but no, I haven't, I haven't read that one yet. The working in public book. Um, about CSS versus CSS and JS, what do you think about Tailwind? Tailwind seems cool. I, I think it is great. I haven't used it yet much besides just like playing around with it a little bit. I tend to be one of those who likes to just write my own CSS, uh, even though Tailwind would probably save me a lot of time. But everyone I know who is into Tailwind loves it. So what can you do? Gatsby tensions feel a little similar to SO, Stack Overflow tensions. Yeah, well, and that's a whole other... Long story short, communities are hard, and especially when egos get involved and stuff. Uh, I was sad to see a lack of communication. Yeah, it's, it's really hard because you don't... What frustrates me in community things and in just the internet and social media and stuff in general is that people start calling out and and yelling without getting the full story and uh and that just leads to people getting hurt and and that's not great i mean i i'm going to use a very brief example because i don't really want to talk about it much but i made a tiktok this week and that tiktok there's a trend on tiktok where uh people like make fun of hallmark videos or hallmark movies and stuff of, of like the very typical trend of like a city girl going to a small town, someone is Santa, that kind of thing. And I made a programmer version of it. And there was a person on TikTok who claimed that I stole her work when I didn't. I, I was definitely inspired by it because she did a bunch of videos on that trend, but I was doing a programmer version of it. And she called me out hard and like made videos about me on her TikTok, on her Instagram. Her followers were getting all over every one of my social media platforms and saying some very unkind things. And it was scary and frustrating because things that they were calling me out for that, like, they, again, didn't bother to try to get the whole story. They were saying, you used a J name just like she does because she uses the name Jeffrey. And I'm like, I use the name Joe because it's my husband's name. So anyway, the stuff like that is, is really frustrating because they were calling me out for all kinds of stuff for things that I was just laughing about and I deleted the video because I didn't want to deal with it. But that's very, 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 very small example of some of the things that other people have to deal with. Um, and, and it's not nearly as serious as what some people have to deal with. And so when it comes to community things, when it comes to people things, it's, it is best to try to get a full picture of something before calling people out as much as possible. And that is as much as that, that is how much I'll say about that. That was a very awkward sentence. 
I will say that. <laughs> um, and so for Gatsby stuff, because I don't know the full picture of everything, I can't comment too much about it. It was a very, very uh, long way of saying that. Um, back to code questions. How often am I using test-driven development? Kind of depends. Um, I, I really like test-driven development when I do backend stuff, but I don't often do backend stuff. So there you go. Um, it doesn't really make sense in my brain to do test-driven development for UI stuff because it's, you kind of have to plan differently if you're going to do that. Um, oh, and I, I accidentally missed the question. Is there a difference between learning and using React versus Vue, or is it a question of more what you're comfortable with? More what you're comfortable with. I've used both. I stuck with React because I was more comfortable with it, but they're both great. Um, so many things. Uh, what's life as a DX engineer? What's the main focus, documentation, tooling, infra that can improve the overall pl platform? All of the above. And so it, it kind of depends. Uh, I keep using it depends, but it's, it's true. Uh, with, with, for example, my, uh, my team, we kind of all take different pillars of stuff. So I do React and Next.js. One of my coworkers, Tara, she does Angular. My coworker, Jason, does Gatsby and, and React. Um, or my coworker Phil does more like 11 t and indie uh, vanilla JavaScript uh, frameworks and stuff. And, um, and so we tend to write up about different useful things in that regard and, and how, to, how to improve the developer experience for people who follow those communities. But then uh, we don't necessarily do documentation. We have a documentation team for that. But we try to build demos and tools for people in those communities. And we also, on our particular team, I can't speak to other teams. Um, we have a rotation where we each work on the product team on the Netlify product. So for example, one of my teammates right now is working on a feature that is, it was announced at Jamstack Conf this past, uh, this past spring, but um, edge handlers, which will be cool. And I'm still kind of wrapping my mind around them, so I won't get too in-depth. But anyway, she's working in Rust and making some really cool decisions that will ultimately improve the developer experience. Um, but she's working as an engineer on the product. And then when she's done with her rotation, she's going to come back to our team, explain how it all works much more in depth, and then we can build stuff to that. And then someone else will go off and do their product rotation. And so we're constantly working on the product and also building things so it's easy to understand for our developers. Um, and it's all about improving the developer experience so that way developers don't get frustrated building any particular thing. Um, there were a lot of things that happened as I was talking, and so there are a lot of... Uh, uh, so I'm sorry if I skip questions. Feel free to re-put them in there if you, if you need to. Everyone should read the book Nonviolence Communication. Twitter seems to be the contrary of that book. Hmm, interesting. How do you recommend going about quickly prepping for technical interviews? Ooh, good question. Uh, well, so it, I hate saying it depends, but it's true. It depends. Um, I'm not sure what uh, what company you're interviewing for or the size, but typically for larger companies like, say, Microsoft or Google or something, uh, you should do something that is more data structure heavy. For example, Microsoft loves their binary search trees. Make sure you know those back and forward. Um, usually with Google, they tend to really grill you on some kind of hash map or something, um, or implement an API that does this or something like that. Um, and for smaller companies, they tend to be more practical where they'll say, how would you implement this in X framework? Or what are, what are your opinions around this? And so for prepping, I guess I would look up the company on Glassdoor, try to figure out, uh, their general, uh, way of interviewing and, and go that way. Um, do I get a chance to work on a dark, dark, light and dark theme? If so, what approach did you use? Um, I used CSS, just adding a CSS class to the body. Um, that's, that's what I do on my personal website. Do I prefer to code immediately on what comes into your mind or do you prefer to design immediately? So I prefer to code immediately, but I try to design first because designing first is a, I think a better approach. It, it saves you a lot of headache in the long run. So for example, um, I actually wrote a blog post a long time ago, like, like in 2017 about building my to-do app, to-do meter. And that was the first like big project I did with myself. Um, 
by myself that that I, I released uh, open source and everything where I designed it first and then jumped into code. And it made a big difference in just figuring out certain design choices and, and how I would code out certain things and how I would structure it in my brain a bit more. So as much as I prefer to just dive into the code, designing is probably a better route. Let's see. You're from Mexico. Thank you so much. How many keyboards do I have? Many. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the CSS tool that I mentioned that I don't use, but I've heard good things about? Tailwind. Tailwind. Um, thank you. Yeah, the DevRel team here is, is awesome at Netlify. It's been structured really well by uh, Sarah Drasner and the rest of them. Um, yeah, it depends is true in every scenario about tech. I feel like the like more senior I grow in my tech career, the more I say it depends for sure. Um, can I share some tips about being productive while working remote? Yeah, well, I got to work on that myself. And it kind of, it depends. Depending on how stressed out I am, I use a different kind of to-do list. If I am dang stressed, I have just a straight up notebook that I write my to-do list for the day in and I manually cross everything out and do everything out with it. Sometimes I draw stupid things too, but typically it's, it's a to-do list. Um, if I am not at the crazy stress level, but the pretty dang stress level, I use my to-do app to-do meter, um, which I'll put the link to the GitHub. Um, to do meter and I'll paste it in the chat. Um, and that one, it's just a one day at a time to do list where as you complete things, there's a little progress bar at the top. And I just wanted it to be a thing that would kind of reward me when, when I completed certain tasks and stuff. And I actually, I rewrote it recently completely from, uh, when I originally wrote it, it was in Redux and just old React stuff. It was back in 2017, but I recently rewrote it this past spring and I used all new React hooks and everything. And it was a very interesting learning experience. But anyway, I use that when I'm in like my middle level stress. And then if I'm doing somewhat decently, then I kind of have a bigger week wide view where I'm just like, these are all the tasks I want to get done in a given week. And then I just kind of have, it's, it's not, a, it's like a notion board or a Kanban board where, where I, put stuff in and and that's that's generally how I work for trying to get tasks done while remote and sometimes uh it ends up being weird hours where I'm just like oh, I need a break I've been indoors for so long or I need to do something because working in a pandemic is different from working remotely um sometimes that means that you take a break in the middle of the day and you work more at the end of the day and then sometimes that's necessary but in the end it's all a to-do list of some kind uh, what's the difference between Tailwind and something like Bootstrap? Bootstrap defines styles for you, like like this button will have this uh, color and pixels or whatever, and Tailwind lets you define a design system that you can use. Um, you're going to graduate from CS next year. Wow, congrats. Um, start networking now. It's very, very useful to start getting to know people in the tech industry as much as you can now. Um, so that way you can kind of ease your transition into real world stuff. Wow, junior web devs, we love those, welcome. Uh, my preferred OS and why? Ah, honestly, I kind of prefer Windows, but for work I tend to use Mac stuff and then Windows I use uh, my personal coding projects and games and, and that sort of thing. IDE. I vary between Vim and VS Code, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, subtasks to help the progress bar move forward. Yeah, so, and that's up to you how you want to, for, for to-do meter, how you want to break it up. Um, when you pause a task for later, it puts up the yellow progress bar. When you complete a task, it, it grows the green progress bar. If you want subtasks, just make smaller tasks. It's very simple on purpose. Um... What's your way to handle motivation holes? A nap or something. 
Uh, I mentioned my husband earlier. Does Joe also work on something technical? Yeah, uh, he works at Microsoft. He actually just switched from being a software engineer to a PM, and he loves it. Um, we actually, yeah, we, we've done like hackathons and stuff together, and it's, it's fun to work with him on projects. We approach projects in very different ways, uh, and also he's more back-endy and I'm more front-endy, so it's fun when we do end up doing hackathon stuff. Fun fact, we actually met at a hackathon. Um, but anyway, it's, it's fun doing projects together because we can both do our specialties and then kind of get it all connected in the end. Um, we haven't done a project in a little while together, but we probably will at some point. Um, I'm trying to use Notion to that to register my progress. Yeah, Notion, Notion is what I use for the Kanban board of things. And again, it depends on, on uh, how I'm feeling when, um, when I need to get certain tasks done. Notion was great more towards the beginning of the pandemic when I was kind of happy and free and just like, I just got to stay indoors and stick it out. And now I'm like, I have to stay indoors and stick it out. That's how I've been using to-do meter and a handwritten notebook more often. Yeah, it's hard to adapt for sure. Um, I found that I'll finish my work hours, sleep for an hour for a nap. And yeah, yeah, like yesterday, honestly, I took a nap and then I worked later into the night, but I got my tasks done. That's what you got to do sometimes. Do you think you'll explore more functional programming languages in the future? Maybe. I, I've done functional programming before. I took a functional programming class and I've actually given talks on functional programming in JavaScript and it's really fun. I, I really like functional programming. Um, I just haven't gone all in on functional programming in a long time since school, really. Um, what is an average pay rate for on-site? Oh, well... I don't know. It depends. It, it it depends on the company and the role and the tasks and where the company's located and stuff. Did you try split keyboards? I have one in the mail, but yeah, I actually I'll get it later. I have one in a bag over there. Um, following up from the CS grad question, tips on networking. There is a great book I recommend called Build Your Dream Network. I almost wrote Build Your Dream Netlify. Whoops. Um, Build Your Dream Network. It is uh, by Kelly Hoey, who has become quite a great mentor to me. Um, and I just I just posted a link in the chat there. But it's it's all about forming relationships. And the, only, the biggest networking tip that I can give is build relationships. Don't just pr propose to someone, be my mentor, and try to get stuff out of people, build a community around you as much as you can, um, because then people will support you, you can support them, and it's all about giving back to each other rather than taking from each other. Um, with all the hilarious, hilarious content and videos you produce, do you ever struggle with your ego and making a fool of yourself? I think the older I've gotten, the less I care about how silly I look. Um, and that's kind of the honest truth of it. If you if you talk to little old Cassidy back in high school that she would and told her that she would be speaking for a living, whew, she would not believe you. She would just like I went in front of people, and I'd go back to reading in a corner. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, I kind of joke around that my ego is through the roof, but I uh, I am a firm believer. And the fact that you need to have a low ego when you're in tech, because otherwise you'll be angry all the time. <laughs> if the moon was made out of cheese, would you eat it? Yes. Um, what's the best way to handle work and school at the same time? Make a schedule. I actually dropped out of my master's program last year. Wow, what was last year? Time isn't real. Anyway, I dropped out of my master's program because I just, I didn't schedule it well. And after a while, I was just like, I can't do this. I would much rather work than go to school again. I thought... I thought I liked uh, school, and I do. I like learning, but I don't like writing essays at 3 a.m. about human-computer interaction, so I stopped. Have I read Out of the Tar Pit? No, but I'll have to look that up. If you're thinking about being independent, I'm a friend and engineer with a lot of experience. I only see positive things about it being independent. What would convince you not being 100% independent? I considered it, I admit, when I was laid off because of the pandemic this past spring. And uh, the thing holding me back is security. I feel like I need to... What I would love to be 100% an independent developer at some point, but um, I personally 
think that I need to develop more of a framework for myself to continue to be consistent and accountable and have something consistently going that will pay the bills. I personally just don't fully trust what I have right now as a person to to be able to do that. That being said, what I did, um, and this is, you don't have to do this at all, but this is what I've, this is what I've started to do to kind of experiment with that to do someday, um, is I made an LLC for myself. And um, with that LLC, whenever I take on client projects, whenever I do a side project, whenever I do something that might make a little bit of money, I point that cash to the LLC bank account and I don't touch it. I try not to use it unless it's for like business, business expenses for the project. And I'm basically seeing how much can I make in a given year and how can I optimize and accelerate that and stuff um, to see if I could ever do that someday. And that being said, I really like my job at Netlify, so I'm not going independent anytime soon. But I, it's something that I, I feel like when I leave Netlify someday, it will be to start my own thing or to go independent somehow. But until then, I'm just kind of LLCing it up. Um, have I built any of my keyboards? All of them, actually. I think I think I actually got rid of the one that I didn't build. I, I built all my keyboards. Did I order a full split or Alice layout? Uh, no, I, I just did like a, it's it's a 60% keyboard with like the jagged middle and, or 65%, I think. It's it's uh, simple and I'll have to find the link before I talk about it too much. What are the switches on my keep? Uh, these ones are Xilence, 67G Xilence. It depends, a Twitter video in the making. Actually, that's a good idea. I can make a TikTok video on that. That'd be kind of funny. Um, and I learned 621 digits of pi. That's true. It's good to know digits of pi. Uh, isn't it always going to be a friendship of convenience? Oh, networking? Not at all. I mean, it it's the people who I've built, made friends with and made community with are people who I genuinely enjoy. And if if I don't genuinely enjoy them, they don't stick around too much because we don't mesh well. Um, I've got a great sense of humor. Is that something I intentionally work on or is it just natural for you? Thank you very much. Talking about ego, mine is through the roof right now. Um, so... First of all, I come from just a family of people who are very sarcastic and, and make a lot of jokes. Um, and so I do think that that is part of it. I think there was a point in my life where I was like, I should try to make every single thing a pun or a rhyme. And that really, that was something that it, it wasn't even something that I worked on. That was something that started. And then I started just making more jokes more often. But I've always been I've always been some kind of clown. It was just I was quieter about it for a long time. How would I describe my current role in Netlify? I kind of did a little bit earlier. Developer experience. I code a bunch and talk a bunch. Yeah. I'm in the Georgia Tech uh, MSCS program. Oh, that's the program I dropped out of. Hey, I really liked it. The and like the educational technology class, for example, I I have that in a queue to watch since that one is free online. Um but yeah, I, I liked it. Twitch affiliate when? Oh my gosh. I'm so frustrated because every single time I stream, Twitch is just like, by the way, you're one day short from being Twitch affiliate. And it's frustrating. So I feel like I just need to stream like several days in a row to finally get affiliate. But oh, it's such an ordeal. I just, uh, anyway, that's why I'm not Twitch affiliate yet. I'm still one day short constantly. Um, what's my relationship with animations? Do I have a preferred CSS or JS lib to make it easier? Lib, lib, eh. Um, React Spring is great for uh, React animations. CSS animations, I personally just do it myself. Do I have two monitors or one? Why? Two, because I like having screen real estate. Um, what do I do with all my keyboards? Storage, do I make keyboards and sell them? I, I made a nice, and I can't show you again because of my moving situation, but I just made like a nice display stand of all my keyboards and it's like a rotation of all of them. What's the average cost of building your own keyboard? It depends. Um, most of my keyboards are under $300 unless I used a particularly rare keycap set or something. Um, you can do a, cheap, a really cheap one for a hundred bucks. 
um, and then depending on how custom you want to get and, and stuff, then that price can climb. How many Rama works keyboards? Just one. Um, I learned how to make GitHub work with VS Code today. Nice. Cool. I have a funny face. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Vim or Emacs? Vim. Hello from Uruguay. Wow. What language do you use for backend for your projects? Um, I avoid backend as much as possible is the, is the very, very short answer, but JavaScript and then sometimes Python and Django, depending on the project. I want to give you my $5, but you don't seem to want it. Uh, join my Patreon. It'll be fun. <laughs> uh, any interest in the rebooted Model F keyboards? They're cool, but not so much. I, I'm... I kind of like I kind of like being able to customize the look a little bit more, and those ones I feel like those should stay the original look. And so, I have um, I have a Real Force TKL that I really like, and that's probably the only keyboard that I won't customize or anything. It's got Topre switches. It's cool. Yeah, I hear Java's good for backend. <laughs> I do like Java. I I admit it. I admit it. I do like Java, but I wouldn't write my backend in it. Have I won a game of Fall Guys yet? Twist the knife, why don't you? Are we going to build something today? Yeah, we'll build something. We'll probably work on our Pokemon project. I haven't really planned it. We'll just roll with it. Um, I want to work with Netlify. You should. Uh, we're hiring a lot, actually. Uh, we, we're hiring a lot. Um, I actually will pull up netlify.com slash jobs. Um, you should work with us. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to uh, share a link that is attached to me so that way people can see where your things are coming from. It's coming from Twitch and it's going to be jobs, Twitch. Let me get that UTM thing going so that way I can paste it and then we can know uh, we can know that your application came in and I can keep an eye out for it. But mention if you mention my Twitch on the on your job thing, then I can like flag it internally. Um, yeah, apply now. We're hiring a ton. Um, let's see. Have I used the what keyboard? I'm not sure which keyboard you mean. I think it's because it blocked out a link if you wouldn't mind typing it out. Do I like Digimon? Digimon, digital monsters. That is the extent of what I know about Digimon. That phrase right there. I'm afraid of the technical questions if I apply at Netlify. So I'm very proud of, for example, my team and how, how we plan our technical interviews. It's not the same for every single team at LFI, but what we do is we'll, we'll have like a first and second screen with the recruiter and hiring manager. And then what we do for the, um, for the actual technical round is we give you all the questions in advance. And so we'll, we'll tell you all the questions and we're going to give you a GitHub repo. And in that Git, GitHub repo, we'll say, think of a feature that you want to add to this repo. And then for the technical interview, we'll pair program it on it with you and, and see how you work. And that is the technical interview. And then we'll, we'll have a couple like team rounds, but besides that, that's it. And uh, I really love, I really love that we have that as a process because it's such a better thing for the candidate's stress to know exactly what's coming. Um, and so, yeah, not every team does it, but it's there. We're trying to make that be more of a thing. Um, do I speak Spanish? Si. Um, I do admit I understand it more than, more than I speak it, but I often think in Spanish. I was making food last night and thinking in Spanish. Uh, how do I deal with stress and burnout? Unhealthily. Um, I sleep a lot and play video games and then force myself to work more. <laughs> it's not good. I already sent in an application and I mentioned you in the cover letter. Oh, thanks. Uh, let me know what role. Oh, keyboard IO. Yeah, I actually had one. I ended up uh, lending it to a friend, but uh, I liked it. It was cool. And I liked how programmable it is. 
On what team is Joe PM at Microsoft? He works on Azure Functions. There's actually a big Azure Functions for Python Discord channel that he runs. Um, and if anybody's interested, I can send a link to that too. Okay. That one, that's the Microsoft Python Discord. If you are so interested, absolutely no pressure whatsoever, but it's very active. And if you're into Python, that might be your thing. Um, favorite Pokemon? Well, I do like this guy right here. Um, although I like water types more. I feel like if I were to get a Pokemon IRL, I would want a water flying type so that way I could fly places and swim places very easily. <laughs> Uh, what's my method to learn new tech? Playing around and then deep dive into docs or implementation or the other way around? I tend to try to come up with a project that I want to build with that tech, and then I just read the docs hardcore, figuring out how I can do it. Do I require to be located in the USA? In the USA? No, I think it's up to GMT plus two or something, um, just for time zone meetings and stuff. But no, you don't. We have plenty of Europeans and uh, people. Uh, at Netlify. Um, I wish more places did that. Yeah, no, it's it's much more useful to do a job that it's much more practical, I think, to do a job interview like that. I had a coworker at my last job who liked to throw gotcha questions at the candidates randomly. No, yeah, don't do that. Uh, I already a I answered this. Do I have two monitors or one? I have two because I like the screen real estate. What would you suggest PM or SDM if I want to manage and be involved with both tech and product? Depends on the company. Um, I know, for example, at, well, you know what? I would say PM because SDM is more about being a people manager for software developers. And a PM is someone who works on the actual product itself. And, and if you want to code, then neither, unfortunately. Again, depending on the company. Like I worked at a small company where I was an SDM. I was a software development manager and I was also a tech lead working on projects. Um, and it was kind of a 50, 50 role. So it, it again, depends on the company, but if you're looking at a very big company, um, and you want to do some kind of management of some kind PM, um, a people manager is a very different kind of role. You're, you're supporting your team. You're not even necessarily above your team. You, you are the person who is between your team and corporate, and you're figuring out how can you best support your team so that way they look good to corporate. That's, that's what the role is. Are we ergonomic chair something? Uh, I'm on a steel case leap. It's very comfy, comfortable. I was in a gaming chair before, but uh, I would switch to this and I like it a lot. This is a standing desk too. It's a fully Jarvis, um, it goes up and down. I have to cough, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I just inhaled some spit. I'm gonna drink some water, I'm sorry. I dislike live coding interviews like pair programming. I personally prefer take home. Um, where I work, I give the candidate the option of either. So we talked about that. Um, when we were planning out our interviews. And um, we, if you give candidates the option, then there is more opportunity for bias because they've been doing a different interview. And so you want everybody to have the same kind of experience and not everybody has the luxury of being able to do a take home assignment. Um, and not everybody can handle the stress of like a live coding whiteboard interview. And so we figure this pair programming is a nice kind of in between where we can work with them and talk with them a little bit more, see how they work with the team and um, yeah, just inter interact with them a, a little bit more because it's less about, it's less about the solutions they give, at least for us. It's more about how can we work with them? Well, do they generally know what they're doing? Um, and yeah, that's, that's why we do it that way. Working on NGRX stuff for work. Ooh. There's a disturbance from my mic, is there? It might have been just like my mouth. <laughs> I just looked at the price for a steel case leap and fainted. Yeah, so I got it on a mega sale. And also 
there are some places that sell remanufactured steel case chairs and I I want to say uh, it's called BTOD BTOD.com they do remanufactured steel case chairs and it's significantly cheaper than the brand new ones um, BTOD.com and I did a ton of research um, and I can't find it right now, but it is BTOD, and you can look at that there. Steel case leap and gesture greater than anything Herman Miller makes. I agree, but I won't bash him, but you know. Um, at Amazon during the whiteboarding, they were much more interested in seeing how I asked questions and how I approached problems rather than knowing the answer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's how my Amazon interview was too. Like there, there was a point where they asked me to, it, it was a very architectural question where they asked me about like load balancing and mapping out proper solutions um, and shortest distance and those kinds of things. And as I was doing it, like what I always, how I approach them is I talk out exactly what I'm going to do before I actually write anything so we can get a dialogue going. And with that one, even though I'm pretty sure it wasn't the most perfect solution, they cared a lot more about about how I got there. Um, and I, even though my actual working experience at Amazon wasn't awesome, my interview experience was really nice. Uh, what do I think on standing desks? Not sure what you mean. I like mine. It's, it's nice. Um, I have a, do you hear that? There's some loud beeping outside. Sorry about that. Um, how much time do I spend working on personal projects and when in the day? I typically do them after work. Um, and there are some times where my brain is tired from the day and so I don't get to do them, but um, it, it varies on the week, depends on the week, uh, how often I work on uh, side projects. Because for example, one that I've been working on that has been a trip is a, it's not a technical project. It's um, a Kickstarter project that I made for Go, uh, the board game. I, I did a Kickstarter to make travel Go sets um, called Go on the Go. And man, this pandemic has made manufacturing that very difficult. And, and oh, geez, Louise, it's, it's been hard. And so that's been kind of where all of my time has been going uh, outside of work, organizing pieces and packaging boards and figuring out shipping and stuff. It was supposed to be so much easier than this. I knew it would be harder than I expected, but geez, Louise, I, I think every single company I planned on working with had to change because of um, pandemic things. Building's on fire. Let's talk about keyboards. Ha ha ha. Um, steel case chairs look really cool, but for that price, I'd rather ache. Hey got American healthcare here. It's better to spend the money on a nice chair than to spend the money on back pain later. I'm considering a treadmill desk. I can't focus on treadmill desks. I tried. I end up focusing more on how I'm walking. Um, when you're doing something live, you can also ask them what's going on in their head. When planning from home, they can use one hour, 10 hour. Yeah. It, and it's not so much again about the speed or anything. It's about understanding the thought process and seeing how they work. Um, Does Netlify allow remote workers from outside the U.S.? Yes. Um, yeah, we have some we have some South American workers. That works for us. Um, we we do anything uh, basically up to GMT plus two. After that, it, the time zones get really difficult, uh, and and even then we still consider it. But we have to say, are you willing to be up at these hours for meetings? Um, because already for, for some time zones, it is a little rough for some people because it ends up being late in the day for them, but it's really early in the morning for us on the West Coast. Um, I was skeptical about getting a nice chair. Boy, was it worth it. Yeah, like, I, I really liked my gaming chair, but this, I can I can just tell how much better it is for my back. And even, yeah, it's it's just so much better. Rechair, I have an autonomous.ai ergo chair too, and it's brilliant. Oh, I considered that one. I, I did a bunch of research and, and that one, uh, I heard the ergo chair too was really nice. Any chair recommendations for a bad coccyx? Ooh, I don't envy you. I would do something that it's not so much cushion on the bottom, but more mesh. And that's all I can really offer you. 
uh, I'm a night owl. I asked work if I could do the night to morning shift and they said they wanted people to not do that. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I, especially for roles like this, if you're outside of GMT plus two, say that you're willing to deal with it because then, then we're totally fine with it. But not everybody wants to have meetings at that time of night. Like all of my meetings are very early in the morning. Again, this was my first time sleeping in until nine for a very long time. Um, and so, yeah, some people, they have really, really early morning meetings. Like I've had meetings at 6 a.m. before, and that's just how it is because the Europeans needed to fit it in so we could all uh, be able to make it in. And, and so it ends up being potentially really late for you. If you don't mind, more power to you. I have a Herman Miller chair for a while. Oh, no, I'm not going to ban you. Uh, I'm glad that you like the Herman Miller. That's great. Um, Herman Miller from which side? From from West Coast US up to GMT plus two. Sorry, that was unclear. I'm UK, so it benefits me with a night owl. That means I don't have to socialize. I gotta work. <laughs> Fair. Is Herman Miller better than Steelcase Leap? Do your research. I personally liked the Steelcase more. I have an uplip vert. And it's the worst chair. Oh no! If we work at night, can we do meetings in your pajamas? Yep. Where's Netlify's office? So I was never commuting. So if you don't know my history with Netlify, I, I only joined in April. Um, I was fully remote teaching React um, before this. And then my company went under because of the pandemic. Nobody wanted to hire teachers, um, even remotely. And so that is how I joined Netlify. So I've never actually been to the office. And um, with the office and, and everything. Um, we're actually not renewing our lease. We're, we're technically based in San Francisco, but because of pandemic stuff, Netlify has always been remote first, where we have people in SF, but even in SF, like people would only work in the office two to three days a week. Like it was very, very remote first, no matter what. Um, and I don't actually know if there's going to be an office in the end. Um, so if you leave live a bit east of Lake Sammamish, neighbor, um, you'll be remote anyway if we don't have an office here in Seattle. Am I learning a language? Or if I was born as a native English speaker, it is not necessary. Oh, no, I mean, I, I'm i always trying to learn more Spanish. I, I um, For my history with speaking Spanish, my grandparents speak Spanish. Um, that's my Latin side of the family on my mom's side. Um, my grandparents speak Spanish, but they never taught my mom or her, or her sisters how to speak. And so uh, when I was growing up, I always knew they spoke Spanish, but it was never anything that they wanted to teach us. And so I started taking Spanish in school, and then I moved to Spain to study Spanish for a while. And so, um, puedo hablar si necesito. But uh, what was crazy was when I moved back from Spain and I talked to my grandma for the first time after that, she started speaking to me in Spanish for the first time in my life. And it was weird because it was this weird thing where I was like, you speak perfect Spanish and you've never spoken this language to me before. It was this very trippy thing. Um, but uh, I, I do speak Spanish. I'm always trying to get better at Spanish because I haven't had much opportunity to, to practice. Um, and I'm also attempting to try to learn Korean. My, my husband is Korean and, and his family is from Korea. He was actually born in Korea and Korean is dang hard, fam. Korean is really hard. Uh, the, the vocabulary and reading the alphabet is actually not too bad, but their grammar is different. And so um, working on that. Um, what about French? French. Bonjour. My mom actually speaks pretty decent French. Um, I, I, I really liked going to France and I can actually read French and Portuguese pretty well just because it is pretty similar to English or, or not to English, to Spanish. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I would love to master Spanish a little bit more because I, I love speaking it and I still talk to my, my Spanish friends that um, I had back when I lived in Spain. But um, yeah, I haven't had the opportunity to practice it as much. Annyeonghaseyo. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> I was making sure that that's what I read. I had to make sure. I 
I visited Korea last year to visit uh, my in-laws um, and, and meet my husband's family. And it was actually pretty funny because they kind of carted us around like all of Korea, just giving us a tour and everything. And it was funny because I'm relatively tall and the average height in Korea is not as tall as I am. So it was kind of just me, this tall white girl amongst all these Koreans that were like this height in front of me uh, and lots of people were staring at me and it was it was pretty funny um it didn't bother me as much but like my brother-in-law was just like man they are really not used to you being around here um where did I learn Spanish I studied in Cáceres um it, if you don't know where that is that's uh, kind of halfway between Madrid and Lisbon sort of I, I studied at the university there um East, Eastern Asian languages are so time consuming to learn. I know. You were 22 when you found out your mom was fluent in ASL? That's, wow, that's nuts. And, and isn't that wild? Like I, I first learned how fluent my grandma was in Spanish and not even like, she knew that I lived in Spain and she spoke to me in the Spain dialect. Like she was using words that were more Spain-y than, than Mexico-y. And uh, it's weird. It's it's it because it's this whole way of communicating that you never considered before, and it kind of broadens your horizons in such a wild way. You speak Australian. You wouldn't think it's a different language. But I lived in the UK for two years now and still get plenty of looks for British people. Oh, I bet. Um, do I like kimchi? Oh, I love kimchi. My husband actually jokes that I'm more Korean than him because I love kimchi so much and. Like I'll I'll eat it even without rice. I could I, I could eat kimchi all day. How tall am I? I am almost five ten, five nine and a half ish. Um, can I recommend one or more books to learn JavaScript to read or learn from the internet? Scrimba is really great, and I keep bringing them up, and it's not meant to show my own course on there, but I really like how interactive Scrimba is. See that beard came up. Uh, yeah. Por qué portugués? Um, Portugal is beautiful. I loved going and visiting there, but yeah, I can't, I can, only, I can kind of read it. I can't speak it. Um, we're all wondering how you escaped. I assume you're talking about the Australian. <laughs> um, how old am I? I'm in my twenties. I'll let you guess the rest. Um, up from Portugal. Wow. I really, oh, I want to go. I, I had so many trips planned to Europe this summer and I am very, very sad that I didn't get to go. Um, do I listen to Korean music? Oh yeah. Um, I, I like, I like K-pop. I, I don't listen to it super, super regularly, but, um, I love my Korean dramas. Um, and, and I really like Blackpink. They're, they're really good. There's a song that I listened to recently, um, called Dessert. And I love it because it's all just, you know what I deserve? Dessert. And they just talk about desserts the entire time. And I love it. Was it difficult to learn Spanish? Um, I'm bilingual, but native from Argentina. So I didn't think it was that difficult. The What got me were the imperfect tense and subjunctive tense. Um, th those ones I still kind of struggle with. Um, and also the difference between por y para. I, I, I mix those up all the time. Those three things, imperfect, poripara, and subjunctive, very difficult. I, uh, and, and I still, I, I generally get it now, and, I, and honestly, I kind of just try to avoid sentences that include them if I can, but uh, those are the things that I, that I found the most difficult. Um, Portuguese here, you did, should definitely visit one day. I want to. I, again, I, I did go to Lisbon, and it was beautiful. I loved it there. Um, I'll come back again someday. Um, do I watch anime? I do. Uh, it doesn't count really, but I fin I just finished watching Avatar The Last Airbender for the first time and it was awesome. Um, and before that I was watching Hunter x Hunter. Um, I really liked Death Note. I, I think my favorite is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. That one's really good. Is Spain and Argentina different? Yes. Uh, it's like Jojego instead of Yoyego. And then, uh, like the fra the the American pronunciation of thank you, gracias. If you were to say it in different places, it can sound very different. Gracias. That's what I learned. But then when I went to Spain, I went gracias. 
like the, it's a, it's very lispy and cutting off the cutting off the s at the end. And so it, depending on where you are, you can kind of the the accent is very different for sure. Um, red, brown, or blue switches for coding. I use Xilinx actually. Um, I haven't done the last hairbender. It was so good. Oh, you finished it yesterday. Nice. Oh, like. I know she's evil, but Azula, go. You know your stuff. Like, everyone was afraid of her. It was amazing. Oh, that je Argentinian sound was really accurate. Yeah, I know. There, when I, uh, I actually, like, I went to this church when I was living in Spain, and there were a bunch of Argentinians living there because they were doing some remote program with them. Um, so many times when they were speaking, like, Myself and the other Spaniards were just kind of looking at them, trying to figure out the je sounds that they were throwing at us. Um, Spain has four main languages, which strongly influences the local dialect. Yeah, because there's there's like Gallego, there's Catalan, there's Valenciana, there's there's all kinds of different languages there. You joined the latest essay oblivion group by, yeah, that's what I got on this, and I definitely joined the group by again because actually, the, these two keys are kind of. I don't know if it's because I've overused them, but they're getting... I think that I, they came scratched. Anyway, I ordered new ones and I also got some Vim keys and some extra ones. I'm very excited about that. Zuko is your first crush on your younger. It's so funny. Um, you follow a bunch of infosec people that uh, overlaps with coding stuff. Oh, thank you for liking my video. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Which Spanish accent do I find the hardest to understand? Puerto Rican. It's very difficult to understand. Um, yeah, I like this keyboard a lot. <laughs> the accents are all different in Latin America. Oh, I know. There, there are so many things. And was what's funny is I've I've talked with. Can you tweet me in Spanish? Yeah, I've tweeted in Spanish before too. Go for it. I I made one video in Spanish with an Argentinian group, um, which was pretty fun. Um, so many Argentina in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I I do want to I I do want to practice more. I, the thing is, I I practice better when I'm able to converse with people. Um, and like once I get going, like I've I've gone to Spain several times now, and I've I've taken my husband there on our honeymoon and everything. And if you give me like a good amount of time to warm up, or I'm speaking Spanish with a person regularly, um, like when we were in Spain, I it took me probably two hours to be able to kind of get my tongue back and be able to to speak it more fluently, or rather conversationally. Um, but if you just say, hey, speak Spanish now, I'll be like, hola. <laughs> and then, uh, it'd, be, it'd be hard for me to kind of pick it up. Um, but I, I can do it if necessary. Um, you're learning English and JS. Good luck. Buena suerte. <laughs> um, we should probably code some, shouldn't we? I am... Uh, Getting a bunch of messages. Oh, they don't matter, so I'm gonna minimize this. Yeah! Um, English or JS, which one is more regular? Let's be real, English. English is weird. I, the, more, the more I learn other languages, the more I'm just like, what was English thinking? Um, geez Louise, okay. So, before I do start sharing my screen and stuff, um, Let's see, that happens to me when someone asks me to speak English and you're just, the cat is under the table. That's hilarious. Um, what's funny is my dad, who doesn't speak any Spanish, um, his favorite thing to say is S-O-C-K-S because it's just spelling the word socks in English, but it sounds Spanish. And so people are just like, oh, you know what you're talking about. And he's like, yeah, he does not. He is not from the Latin side of the family. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, would you like to work on our Pokemon game more? We can, or I could, I could work on something else. Um, does anybody have any preferences? Yeah, S-O-C-K-S, ha ha. Um, Principal in my experience is a pretty lofty title. Yeah, whew. it's, uh, I was nervous when I was interviewing with it, but as weird as it sounds, because I interviewed with the principal title at multiple companies, I was more, I was comfortable with it. Like I was interviewing with Microsoft and other things and, and my title was going to be principal at all of them. And so because it was working 
with or because that title was the one that I was at with multiple companies, I was more comfortable with it and it wasn't just like a shot in the dark. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, let's see. You can't assess the empire. Pokemon. Um, how different is React Native to Native React? Ooh, I could get into this. Um, long story short, React is the thing that defines a user interface. React DOM is the thing that defines it for the browser, and React Native is what, uh, or React DOM is what uses that uh, template, that blueprint for the browser, and React Native is what uses that blueprint for mobile. And so React and React Native work very well together. React DOM and React Native do not. Um, and you could theoretically write the same code for both, but because of how things are displayed in the browser and displayed in React Native, um, you have to do your markup differently. And that is what's really powerful about React Hooks is because you can do all of your non-component specific business logic in a hook and then use it in both React Native and React um, and be able to share a lot more code. Um, See, we have a famous Argentinian Twitch who learned English entering Zoom of English people. Oh. Um, thank you for the congrats. How did I end up doing so many different content creation things around the internet? I don't even know. It just kind of started to happen and I rolled with it. Like I truly thought it'd just be fun and it started to pile on. I think the first like content creation stuff I really started doing was my newsletter. And that one, I was just like, oh, it'd be useful to have a newsletter to tell people about when my online courses are coming out. And plus, it'll force me to read web dev articles that I can share with people instead of keeping them in a tab and eternally. And then uh, I'd been doing talks for a long time through work. And then the videos that I make that are silly on Twitter, I started doing just for fun. I didn't have a lot of, like, I had a decent amount of Twitter followers last year, but it increased exponentially when I started making those videos. Um, and I truly wasn't doing it for followers, I was just like, huh, my little pocket of people might find this funny. And uh, then it exploded. So that's, that's, it's truly just randomly, I'll try this and then having fun with it. Kotlin or Swift, Go or Rust? It depends. Uh, odd question, but is there a site that can help me pick the most user-friendly UX for different kinds of sites? Honestly, I just scroll dribble a lot. I dribble and then and search on dribble for different designs and things. We call principals engineers staff engineers where I work. So we're actually at Nellify, we were going to open source our levels to kind of be more explicit about it. The way we have it is there's software engineer one, software engineer two, senior software engineer, staff, senior staff, principal. And I think after that is like partner or something. I assume I'm not going to be promoted anytime soon, so I haven't actually looked it up beyond principle. But that's that's how we do leveling with us. Um, and we based it on Microsoft leveling, but internally we were very explicit about how we wanted it to be very, very intentional leveling with, with like salaries and stuff where one of the things that they that sold me on it when I was interviewing, they said we want it to be where if you were to walk into a room and the entire team's salaries were on the board, no one would be upset because the leveling makes sense, the salaries make sense for that level, and and that, that's, that's how we wanted it to be. So, um, and in having a lot of different levels um, based on that, uh, it gives more opportunity for growth and, and uh, figuring out the depth and breadth of your skills and stuff. Um, is it Thursday again? I know, time, am I right? On Monday, I was convinced it's Wednesday. Yesterday, I was convinced it was Friday. Today, I just kind of slept and, you know. How do you do, Cassidy? Thank you. Um, what area of programming do I work in for my day job? React front end. We have three levels, SWE, Senior SWE, and Staff at SWE. We're at only 250 people, though. You're a lot bigger than Netlify, but yeah. What do I think of you? It's good for some people. All right, so what's everyone's salary? Let's get into it. Let's not. Um, so do you want to work on the Pokemon game, or do you want to work on something else? I need a poll. I'm going to make. I'm gonna figure out some kind of extension to make a poll. Do you want to work on uh, on our Pokemon game? Do you want to work on 
some react concept we gotta vote for pokemon can we do tests i'm not prepared for tests right now but i can prepare for tests in a future one do we do you ever have to write anything other than react i've had to do like 11 t and view and stuff at work before um you can do twitch polls yeah I'll, I'll figure that out at some point twitch plays react coding Ooh, that could get nasty Flets my back-end skills on the stream, please. Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> okay, well, because there's trolls saying to do Unity and back-end, let's not. Um, let's go over here and start sharing stuff. Um, does the Netlify UI all react? Mm -hmm. Lots of it is react. The marketing site is all view and 11 Um... There are different aspects of the site that are built with different things. Um, I'm the tech lead on a project right now that's going to be a next project. Look at where we are. Um, let me see other projects. Do I prefer React or Vue for a personal project? React. Is the Netlify UI all React? I already answered that. We're desperately trying to get away from a legacy backbone JX system and go into React and Next, but we keep getting dragged back in. I am so sorry. The moment when your trolls are your mods. I know. You people. Thank you. I'm very grateful for you. The Jonesy and Tom Zors Live are my mods. There you have those swords next to the usernames, and they're lovely. Give them a high five. I like them. Well, sometimes I like them. Sometimes they're just trolls, and I deal with them. Um, I should clarify 250 is the whole company. I think engineering is about 50 to 60-ish at the moment. Ah, oh, nice. Okay, so... For those who haven't seen our typing game before, um, I don't think I have anything pulled. Yeah, we're all up to date. Um, PM run dev. We have a Pokemon game here. And in this Pokemon game, what we do, and I, I kind of have to, oh, I zoomed in way too much on this. My apologies. Okay, in this Pokemon game, there's sound effects. It shouldn't affect you and only affect me, I think, because I, I turned it down on this end, but there's sound effects where if I click start, Pikachu, Pidgey, Ditto, Mew, Mewtwo, etc. You type in different Pokemon names, and then when you're done, you get a little score of all of the Pokemon that you typed in. It's cute. Um... You know what the you know what I'm going to build? I'm going to build a volume on or off button because it is very loud. Um, did I check whether or not I could get discounts for your community? Oh, uh, I did. They're doing a big site-wide sale right now. And so they're just like, do the sale. And then if people want more, we'll talk later. And I was like, okay. So right now, Scrimba is $19 a month for all the courses, not just for the individual one. And so... That's what I could get for now. Uh, I'll ask again soon. Um, so anyway, uh, this is this is the Pokemon game. You guess stuff. Um, I don't have a dark mode button. We could implement that too. Um, someone actually... Oh, I don't have the URL right now. Someone was very kind and actually put all of the... Oops, don't want to do that. They actually put all of the Pokemon cries into a Cloudinary API for me to use, and I saved that on a different computer. And so I have to find it. But it was awesome of them. It was you! Jake, hello! Can you DM that to me again, please? Uh, it was very, very kind of him. Or is your handle the same as it is on uh, Twitter? Because then I could just go to your Twitter and find you. Uh... Jake, Z, Neil, that appears to be you. Okay, hang on one second. I'll just look you up and then my username. Um, and then I should find the tweet. Yeah, look at that. I'm going to post the tweet in the chat so that way you can check it out. But this is awesome. Um... And yeah, it's this it's this function API where you can get the pokey cries. And then if I were to copy that in and do that, 
it gives you the Bulbasaur cry or whatever. So thank you so much. This is awesome. I will use that now, actually. Because, okay, it looks like you get the Pokemon ID, and I assume that's just the Pokemon number. Um, so let me put that in here really quick. But then also, um, if you want to see the game as it currently is, here is the link to that. Um, about the mods from my limited experience on the Discord, the people there are generally awesome and very helpful. Yes, my Patreon Discord is my favorite corner of the internet by far. Um, so anyway, that is that is the, uh, yeah, not on Discord. They need to be tamed on Discord. <laughs> you say yet. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so we've got we've got these these functions. When you call it, you get the thingy. So because I've got this use pokey API thing that uses this sound, I could do something very similar where I could do use a Pokemon cry or whatever. Use pokey cry. I'll call it. I'm gonna put the URL in here again. And take that out here. Is it on GitHub? Yes. Um, I think it's typing game. Yeah. I should probably rename it to Pokemon typing game, but that's the repo. Um, so if you want to deploy and fork your own, you can click that deploy to Netlify button and it'll do that for you. But until then, Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, with this use pokeycry.js, I'm basically going to do the same thing as I did with use pokey API. Yeah. Um, and also I might, I might put use pokey API in its own separate hook in the hooks folder to kind of clean up this giant game.js file. I think I can do that. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do that too. Okay, new file, use pokeyapi.js. This is kind of an organization one, um, but I want to make sure, let's see, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Copying that here, taking this out, use pokeyapi, pasting it in, export default function that, and now in game.js, I'm going to do at hooks use pokey API just to clean this up a little bit. And then um, calm down, I'll import it. Okay, 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 okay. Don't need use reducer here. Cute. Okay, so we got that part done. Um, now we don't need use effect here. Ooh, look at us go. Um, and with the reducer, we could actually do the same thing because we're just using it as a hook here too. Let's do that. Um, we are really cleaning things up. Oh, I love cleaning. Okay, use game reducer.js. And then in there, we'll do a little bit of that. We'll do export default function use game reducer. Then we'll copy this. I know that there's a command for copying a line and copying it down because I've I did it in like Vim mode and I know that there's a like way to do it in VS Code, but meh. Anyway, okay, so we're using game reducer and now I'm going to delete this use game reducer to do that. And that should be just fine. Oh, except I need to import the use reducer hook. I know, calm down. Oh, use battle sound is not defined. What are you talking about? I didn't change that. What? Did anybody see what I did? <laughs> oh, it's because I wanted to use that in the reducer itself. That's why. That's my bad. Okay. And then, oh, actually, oops. I'm 
using Pokemon Array in this as well. Okay, taking that out, saving that, using the Pokemon Array in here. Okay, now we should be good. It should theoretically not have changed anything, except now it's cleaner. Cool. It, it works. I'm just gonna mark I'm done. Wait, my score is zero. Uh-oh. Why is my score zero? Okay, I know why my score is zero. That's fine. Um, my score was zero because I hit enter and because it was an empty value in the um, input array, it marked that as an empty thing. And so I want to make sure that if it if action.pokemon is empty. I can fix that as a minor little bug there. Else if this, this down there. Um. Do nothing. I guess I didn't even really need to do an if statement for this. Eh. Did I spell Pikachu wrong? That also could have been my own fault. Shortcut for duplicate. Thank you. That's helpful. Um. Eh, you know what? I'll fix that later. Um, let's get this volume thing fixed because it is loud and uh, I want to be able to control the volume. I want to be able to get the battle cries. Let's get the battle cries, actually. Um, so with the use success sound and everything, we have the sound and then it's just passed into this sound here. And this is lovingly hosted on uh, my coworker Jason's uh, Cloudinary right now. I'll put everything on mine eventually, I just don't have one. Um, let's see. Do you never program in JS and if I do it's not ES6? ES6 is old by now, fam. You better get with the times. Um, okay, so I'm going to have a mute button that calls stop. Oh, that's, that's just what I'll do here. Um, to think about this. What does the use sound API do? Like the, what hooks does it offer? Because it'd be nice to, that is so cute. Man, adorable. Okay, does it just have start and stop? Does it have mute? Does it have volume? Because it'd be nice if it had all of the above, but I don't actually know if it does. Your whole feels bad, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if you answered, but does use reducer completely replace Redux now? Reducers plus context replace Redux, yes. Thanks, Joe. Joe just brought me some chips. Thank you. Mm. We got these turtle chips, they're called. They're sweet corn flavored turtle chips. This is not an ad. These are just delicious. Joe, UberX says hi. Does he know you? Oh, it's Annie. Okay, I'll tell him. Annie says hi. Hey, hi, Annie. Annie. Nice. Wow. Thanks, Joe. If you've never had Milkis, I highly recommend that too. It is dang good. Anyway volume so it looks like you can set the volume in the hook itself with this volume 0.5 oh that's cute but can you adjust volume play pause button okay oh there's a stop and is playing thing 
Thank you, Joe. Bye. Jonesy's like, we got our weekly Joe cameo. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Stupid. Okay. Hmm. Oh, this is very powerful. I did not look into this enough before. Okay. Yeah. Joe's working as my my snack giver. He is great. Yeah, ECMA does yearly releases now. So ES6 was... Was that 2015? I think so. Maybe 2016. Is Netlify remote? Yes, fully. Okay. But volume. Volume is what I want to know. Hmm. So it can be passed in, but it doesn't look like it can be adjusted. Which is fine. I might adjust it to half volume anyway, just because it is pretty loud. But I gotta stop eating these. These are really good. Okay. They have a sound enabled thing that you can pass in. So I could make a state for if sound is enabled and pass that to the hook. So that can affect both the battle sounds and the success sounds for the entire game. So that could work. Does streaming while coding help me focus? Yeah. I mean, I talk to the chat a lot and I don't know if everybody is okay with that. So sometimes. Hmm. Okay, so I do like this sound enabled thing. Um. Oh, he does not have that in the thingy. That is fine. I just want to see how he passes options. Are they an object or are they just a Boolean? Let's see, use sound. Okay, that looks like an object. Yeah, cool. All right, so first of all, I am going to pass in, we have that sound, and we're also going to do um, the sound enabled thing and pass that in. Excuse me, it's <laughs> gross. Um, named function for components or arrow function? I don't care. I tend to use a named function like this um, for hooks and then if it's logic inside of a component, um, I do arrows, but I, I don't really, I, I'm not consistent enough to have a preference. Okay, I'm gonna have sound on be passed in here. And I'll have sound on equal true if it's not passed in. And then I'll do the same thing with the battle sound. These two hooks are kind of the same. I kind of want to combine them because it's truly just like different music, but eh, I'll do that later. <laughs> we'll have a whole like cleanup stream. I miss having coding sessions with real people. A little bit of code, a little bit of chit chat. Yeah, I know. That, that's kind of why I like this, because it feels like, even though I'm talking to a screen and you're just typing at me, it feels like I'm pairing with someone. It, it feels like we're actually doing something together. Okay. So, uh, in the game, I'm going to pass in the sound on thing. Oh, and we're actually doing that in the reducer, right. And so sound on will be a state that I pass in here. Yeah. We'll do sound on is true, and then we can trigger that if needed. And so we'll have sound on in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I want I'll have to change this then. How do I make that react to that state there? If I'm li if it's living in the reducer. Ooh, this is funky. Let's think about this. You know what else we could do, do, do together? Play Fall Guys. Hey, we could do that too. Uh, maybe if I get frustrated with this. How do I make that react? Hey. <laughs> okay. Um, I wish this returned a way to mute things. Because how... Sound enabled is a boolean that allows you to pass in a value, typically from context or redux or something, to mute all sounds. This is over in play options. Oh, what's play options? That might actually be what we want to use instead. Um, ooh, okay. You can call this function without any arguments when you want to trigger the sound. You can also call it with a play options object. Okay. You generally never want to do this. The only exception I found triggering a sound on the mute button. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I want to do. So maybe I don't pass it in to my hooks, but I call it from battle sound. And with battle sound, I can pass in the value in here and so instead of uh, instead of it being passed in in my hooks, I can just undo all of this, save that, undo all of this, save that. So instead of updating those at all, I can just do it on the play button or on play. And so if something is muted, I can force sound enabled when I call play. And that's passed in. Let's see. Used for sprite identification. Don't need that. F allows you to override sound enabled when passed in. I want to see an example of this. You're obsessed with my Charmander. I love it, right? That was something where, like, we got... I, I've told this story on the stream before, but we got it at Legoland, and we, like, we basically had to negotiate with the carnival ride people. Bye! Talk to you later! Um, we had to we had to argue with them because they're just like, we didn't see you win our carnival game. And we were just like, but we did, though. And they were really pushing back on it, and it was just truly arguing until we had this victory of winning the Charmander. And when we moved, we were just like, do we need this giant Charmander? And I was like, I want to keep it. Shut up, Jonesy. He's so tired of hearing how I got into coding. If you're interested, I have an AMA. And if you'd like to learn more about things, there you go. Um, anyway. It's a boolean pass to hook options. Is hook options an object? That would actually be helpful. I think it is. Okay, that's actually that's actually really helpful. Um, wait, no, we already talked about this. Um, play options is what I want to look at. Play options. Okay, I assume that this is just an object that I pass in and I do force sound enabled in that object. I'll try it and we'll see what happens. Um, and so if sound, I'm gonna have a muting action, mute and unmute action um, in here. Let's see, it makes function easier to scan. Semantic highlighting? Mute beyond the highlighting I already have? How many colors do you need? That's just, 
it's just nuts. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to have mute return sound on is false and then I'll have an unmute case. True. And then we have the play options object with force sound enabled. And so we'll do that object with force sound enabled state dot sound on. I'm going to assume that this works. I'm kind of hoping it does, and that can be that, but I truly don't know if it's gonna. Um, oh, and I did want to adjust the volume because it is dang loud. This case, so the second thingy is this. Um, that, and then that. I'll do 0.5. We don't need it that quiet. I'm just gonna copy this whole line. Again, I should really consolidate these later. Okay. Now, let me do a quick time check, because I don't think I have any more meetings today, but I do want to confirm before I get too into things and never look at my calendar again. Oh, we're good. We're not good. Oh, we're good. We're good for now. I have a meeting in 45 minutes, so we're good. Um, okay, so we have fixed that. We have fixed that. We don't need to touch that. We have the state sound on. All that jazz. Now I need a mute button. And so the mute button is going to be, I don't actually need to pull that sound on state from in here. Um, I'll just add a button. We have that uh, nes.css thing that we've been using. Does that, you had no idea I streamed, what? Um, does anybody have a preference on what the mute button looks like? Mm -hmm. Someone in your boot camp cohort recommended following you on Twitter. Wow, which boot camp are you in? Um, I've given some talks at uh, Full Stack Academy and at Flatiron. Um, last time I went to Tokyo, I won a huge Nianka Senke push. Wow, nice. <laughs> oh, General Assembly, cool. I've thrown some events there. Oops. Oh, that was a file picker. Nice. Okay, I'll just do the primary button. That's nice. Um, let's have... We should probably just have the mute button live somewhere separate, like in a corner or something. But right now everything's kind of in this one giant uh, game.js. Um, so what I could do is make a new component that pulls in use game reducer, but all it does is dispatch mute or unmute, and uh, we can make that live outside of our game, which would probably be a good call. Game is getting kind of chonky. Um, mute should be the normal style, not the primary style. Yeah, normal style is probably a good call. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it! Quit twisting my arm! Okay. Uh, then in that case, yeah, you know what? I'll just make another component. Mute button.js. And in mute button.js, we're going to have all sorts of things. I'm going to copy the footer stuff. Not because, oh, did I? Okay, we're good. Not because I want to make it like a footer, but because uh, then I don't have to write some extra things. Mute button. And then I also want to import this. I don't even need to get state. I only need the reducer or, or the dispatch. Um, and I'll import use game reducer from mute button like that. And then we're going to turn this into a button slash button. I take this stuff out for now. And that button is going to be mute or unmute. I'd like to put a little icon in there, but let's do one thing at a time. Um, so we've got our cute little mute button. We're going to have to style it. I kind of want to just put it at the top of the page. Um, 
I'll do it in like the upper right hand corner. Um, button position absolute. And then I'll do top 20 pixels, right? 20 pixels. That should be fine for now, right? Um, and then I'm going to put mute button inside our index, the page. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to put it in main. It's just going to live out here. And let's see, what was that key command you told me about? I'm going to scroll up and find it. Shortcut for duplicating a line is control shift D. That was not it. Thank you for trying though. Command shift D. This is on a PC, so I doubt it. Yep. That's definitely not it either. Eh. I got good old copy and paste. It's cool. Gonna do that. Mute button. Mute button. We are all muted now. Okay. I'm gonna do that. And now with our mute button, that's gonna be, look at that. We got it at the top of the page. Oh, what? Okay. And it's the NES button. And I don't think I need to add any classes if it is a uh, if it is a normal button. Look at us go. We got a button. Cute. Okay. Let me go back to this. Shift Alt down arrow. Yep, that's it. Now I know. <laughs> Do that next time. Oh yeah, no, that must be sublime text then. I'm too deep into re Redux is use context with use reducer less complex and faster. Yes. We are too deep into this stream for me to get into it, but perhaps I can talk about it next time. Um, I did it in, I like to do class names in these brackets if possible, because then that allows me to put variables in here because I was thinking I would change the class depending on if it's volume up or volume down or, or volume on or volume off. So, from here, I am going to use the state object, it turns out. I'm going to do let uh, sound on is equal to state to get that. And then whenever I click on this, I want to toggle uh, mute or unmute. Um, and I'll, I'll make that a separate function that I just call in there. Um, let toggle volume toggle sound. function and then inside of that function what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on click if sound on then we want to mute dispatch of type mute otherwise unmute Does this make sense so far? All Zero is raiding with a party of four. Hello, thank you so much for raiding. I appreciate it. We're currently working on our Pokemon game and we're toggling some volume because right now it is very loud. And so we're trying to make it a little bit quieter um, with this mute button thing that we've got going here. Um, and actually, because we're doing this a little bit logically, what I can do in here is I'll have sound on and then if it's true we'll we'll have i'll just do sound and then i'll do silence we can add icons and stuff later <laughs> used Aussie for authentication for the first time yesterday yeah they seem they seem great i haven't used them in a long time but uh people love auth zero and so awesome okay so now we need to add this on click toggle sound in here like that. That should work. Look at that. Okay. So now let's actually see if it works in our game. We will, we will find out. Okay. There's sound. It does not work. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> But what if I click silence and then start the game? Because that'll be a good indicator. 
Still doesn't work. Okay, that's okay. Everything is fine. Okay. Um, but is the button label a state or an action? The label is just a state because it's indicating what state we're in. The action is uh, the toggling itself that is triggered. Um, okay, so first of all, I want to I want to save some stuff really quick. Off to have a question: hosting a website that you recommend for a simple website, Netlify. If you go to netlify.com/drop, you can literally drag and drop. An HTML. Oh, I'm logged in. You can you can drag and drop an HTML CSS JavaScript folder into it, and it automatically hosts your site. Like that's about as simple as it gets. Um, and then if you want to maintain it a little bit more, you can make an account and actually like update the site and connect it to Git and everything. But it's about as simple as it can get. Should I know promises and callbacks in JS before learning React? It would help. Sure thing, you're welcome. Full disclaimer, full disclosure, I do work at Netlify, but I was using this before I worked at Netlify. It is very, very, very simple. Um, and the fact that you can literally drag and drop a folder and it's just done, it's, that's great. Um, one second, I'm going to commit this to Git for now, just so we can have a checkpoint of some kind. Um, let's see, we moved things around, so I'm going to add our hooks folder. We also, um, oh wow, we moved so many things around. Good for us. Um, we're going to also add uh, our components because in our components, that's where we took out all the hooks that we moved into the hooks folder. And then we also created our component mute button. And then we added that to the index.js. So that's what we've done so far. I don't need to add package.json. I want to add pages. Okay. Move hooks out to files, add mute button component that doesn't work. Eh, I'll just say add mute button component. We can add the working part soon. Okay, git push. So what that's going to do is that's triggering a build. Um, and, and if you haven't seen that before, I'm going to refresh this. Uh, we get this little building badge right here. Um, whenever you push something to a Git repo, and, and if you have a Git repo connected to Netlify, you can have a little badge that says when your site is building. And so when this finally says success, that means the domain, this typing game stream .app, that will be updated with what we've coded on so far. We should probably make it work, shouldn't we? But we're, we're getting it done. You've been using Netlify to host your website for about a year now. It is really great. Like. Again, I work there, but I work there for a reason. I, I love not only that it's so simple, but it's also very framework agnostic. You can host whatever you want on there. And I le really like that it doesn't lock you into anything. It's, it's very, very flexible. It's, it, again, I work there, so I'm trying not to make it a sales pitch, but it's very developer first and I'm happy to work there. No beer today? Nope, shaved, we're all good. I actually had to scrub my face a ton to try to get uh, to try to get all the beard drawing off of my face. Okay, so we know that this is toggling mute, or or is it? It should be. Uh, let's find out actually. Uh, let's console.log muting, and then I'll do unmuting. Uh, I love Netlify as well. I will also mention star, star, star as a competitor. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. Next, I mean, Vercel makes next and they're very next first and um, they they get the job done. They, they, they host stuff as well. For myself, uh, I, I have used both. I like that there are more things that you can do with Netlify. So there you go. Uh, yeah, you can also host on GitHub pages. Um, with GitHub pages, it's there's a little bit more setup involved to get it like automatically building something a bit more. Like if you wanted to host a React site, for example, um, you would have to set up GitHub Actions and everything to build it. Meanwhile, with 
uh, with this one, I just said in Netlify.toml, whenever I push, run npm run build and npm run export. I don't know if you can even see that. npm run build and npm run export. And then it publishes to the out folder. The, these two commands are all I needed to get it building on Netlify. Um, and GitHub Pages does let you do that with GitHub Actions. So it is possible, but I like that it's a bit easier. Um, oh, and look, we got a success. And so if I were to go to our stream, the button, the button that doesn't work. How crazy would it be if it worked on the prod version? It doesn't, but it would be, it would be interesting. <laughs> Um, is Netlify only for static apps? No, but it is for Jamstack apps, which that's a whole conversation that I don't want to get into. But yeah, just exactly what exactly what ramblings of a madman said. The uh, static generation is an element of it, but you can have very, very dynamic sites on it. Um, okay, cool. So let's figure out why the heck that mute button isn't working. Oh wait, I'm not <laughs> npm run dev. That would do it. Okay, let's see. Now that it's live, do we get the mute on mute? Okay, great. Well, that's a good sign. Wait a minute. Okay, never mind. I thought I saw something, but I didn't. Okay, so. <sighs> I, this is what I'm realizing is this is me not understanding how the use sound hook works. So if anybody knows it, that's ironic, by the way. Someone just pinged me if I should post one of my articles in the Jamstack community that explains exactly that. Please do. and. Because things are uh, links are blocked on here. If you want, you can DM it to me on Twitter. I'll pull my Twitter window over to the side over here, and I can post it in the chat for you. When I see your article, I will share your article. Until then, I'm gonna get back to coding. Favorite Pokemon generation? Gen 1. I mean, there are a lot of cool ones in, in later ones. Um, I play Pokemon Go, and so I'm familiar with all of the different ones, and I haven't finished uh, Sword Shield yet, but um, I have the most nostalgia with uh, with that one. Ooh, you DM'd me on Twitch. Perfect. Thank you for sharing this article, ramblings of a madman. I assume this article is also a rambling from a madman. Oh, is that the wrong one? Oops. <laughs> okay, well, there's another article instead. Eevee, yeah, you know, Eevee has just been growing with this whole world of Pokemon. I'm so proud of Eevee. Okay, um, anyway, let me look back at this sound stuff. I just want to be able to mute and unmute, you know? What's this play active? This is... Maybe it's because this is more for sound effects rather than actual background music, and that might be what my problem is. You almost bought a giant Eevee plush in Japan. Oh, that would have been so fun. What's kind of cool is, again, this is pre-pandemic, um, but in the Pokemon Go community here in Seattle, people are quite active, and um, people go to Japan pretty regularly and they'll come back and bring just tons of plushies. And they're just like, hey, I'm selling them at cost, let me know. And so people are able to get a bunch of plushies that they uh, normally wouldn't be able to get. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let me figure out how to do this thingy. This is so cute though. 
I know you can't really hear the sounds, but you should know it's cute. Okay, this is the right one. Great. And for those who want to see the article beforehand, build a dynamic Janstack app with Gatsby and Fauna. Ooh, I'm going to have to check this one out myself. Data. I've read this article. I, I've re I, I, I recognize it now. This was a good article. Thank you for sharing. Okay, anyway. Um, I could use this stop function. But then the then it would have to be more tightly coupled. Do the Pokemon scream stop when you stop when you move? So I haven't included the Pokemon screams yet. I want to just mute stuff first. Um, hmm. Man, I gotta sneeze again. I'm sorry. Ah. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Okay. Anyway. There's is playing, but again, is playing interesting. This is kind of a good jam. Anyway, uh, um, I think I just need to structure things differently because the way I structured it was based on a misunderstanding of how this API works, and that is my own fault. And so I think that I think that this is all still fine, but the way I have my hooks and stuff set up, I wonder if because hmm. it doesn't recall the hook every single time. This makes me want to restart my Pokemon clone app. It's so fun. No, uh, my brain is kind of in thinking mode. How do I make this work better? Because we've built it so incrementally and kind of ad hoc, it's been very fun, but it, it ends up being leading to weird thinking. Um, so what I think I can do is in, I'll do the battle sound one first, just to experiment. We've got that stop and we've got is playing. And that's pulled from use sound. Is playing. Is the search now working? It's not jumping between all of these. Okay, it lets you know whether the sound is playing or not. Okay, so that's not what we want. I could just have it called a stop function, which is fine. Not really what I want to do. Because then... Yeah, you know what? I'll just do that. I can just have it play the stop sound. Because then with the mute, with sound on, what I can do is I could just have like an, a little, um, instead of having this force sound enabled thing, which I would like to do that. I really think that that's the way to do muting. And they he even said that that's how, that's how you do muting, the force sound enabled. It allows you to override it. You generally never want to do this. The exception I found is triggering a sound on a mute button. So I feel like that's what you should be doing, but it's just not working. I wonder if there's an example with it before I start deleting everything. Um, yeah, I think this is, the, we're doing some refactoring. 
Um, how do you set the width of a page which sets to 100% in different screens? I'm not sure what you mean. If you could clarify the question, oh, that would be great, because I'll happily answer it. Um, anyway, let me look up uh, use sound for sound enabled. Darn it. Maybe that has some stuff in there. This is just copying the docs. No. Is this also going to be copying the docs? No. Okay. Use sound mute button. Let's see if someone has made one of those. Yeah, it's meant for sound effects and not background music. And so that's why it's that's why it's funkier than I would normally uh, go. I wonder if force sound enabled is just an override for the sound enabled bool. Yeah, no, that's th that's what they said. Like it it uh, it overrides sound enabled past to hook options. Um, like that's that's what it's supposed to do. I have an app that works on desktop as well as iPad, but on iPad, the screen moves sideways even though the width is set to 100%. Oh, that, you can set a meta tag for fixing that. Um, here, I, I have one on my personal website. Let me just copy and paste it in there really quick. Um, where is it? This one, the viewport and then the maximum scale stuff. Um, that should generally fix it. And then otherwise you could also just set the overflow scroll to nothing. That, that should generally fix that problem for you. Um, anyway, yeah, I think I have to do the stop button route rather than the force sound enabled route because of how this works um, or rather doesn't work, um, which is fine. I don't mind. Um, because then what I can do is I could just have an if statement, if sound on battle sound, um, and do the same thing with success sound. And then um, otherwise I'll call stop success found and stop battle sound on mute. Yeah, that'll work. That should, that should work anyway. Yeah, battle sound, success sound. Sorry about all the inconsistent spacing. I'm just, I just want this to work. Um, let's see, let's see if that fixes it. I think it should. Oops. Well, there you go. Oh, that's because I didn't do state dot sound on. That was my bad. Okay. State dot and state dot. Yeah, do the overflow X, not just overflow everything. Okay. So that still works. Darn it. Why isn't that working? Oh no. Well, I've messed things up, but things are fine. <laughs> okay, what if I hit silence and then... Why? Okay, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Because we're, if state.sound on is true, that's when you do battle sound. Otherwise, nothing else is calling battle sound, right?
and also the, my my mistake here was that I actually uh, I had the battle sound and success sound both starting to play here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment that out for now. One thing I said. There's a closed issue about force sound enabled. Doesn't know if that'll help. Hmm. I'll look in a bit. Actually, I should look at that because if that's helpful, then I want it. Uh, force sound enabled. In order to implement a mute button, eh, I wanted to do it. Hmm. If anybody wants to see the issue, I'll paste it in the thing. This is not Fall Guys. You should avoid calling the play function if you know you don't actually want the sound to play. I'm gonna... I'm gonna comment and add my two cents so that way they can clear up the docs. We'll see if anything comes of it, but you'll... Okay. Back to business. Okay. Um, what's bugging me is that stopping the sound isn't working. That should, that should be, that should be it. Stopping the sound should work. I can, I can deal with playing it, but stopping it? Like, is stop battle sound just not working? But why? Oops, whoop. My mistake, okay. Yeah, just stop. That should work. What the heck? If you're seeing something that I'm not seeing, please let me know. What does this weird syntax do? This is destructuring the results from use sound that's passed in. So use sound returns an array that has a play function and then an object that has a stop function in there. And so I'm pulling it out with destructuring. That's what that is. Um, that's also what I'm doing here. And that's also what I'm doing here. It's the return value. It's the same thing as if I were to do here. I'll, I'll do let poop but equal use but. It's the same thing as doing let These are the same. <laughs> this and all this is the same. You already registered on Netlify and bought a domain. Nice. But yeah, the destructuring is super, super useful and very important to know if you are uh, if you are new to JavaScript. Definitely experiment with it and play with it because it'll really decrease your code a lot or decrease the size of your code. Yes, most people use foo and bar, but I'm not most people. 
I'm not like other girls. Okay. Um, I am annoyed that stop battle sound doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. Especially because it works here. What the heck was... <sighs> Let's just... Let me just do this right in... I'm not even going to stop success sound. I just want to stop the battle sound. I want to know if this will work. Ah, <sighs> okay. Battle sound has started. This isn't working, even though I clicked mute. Ah, why aren't you working? I'm so annoyed. Because that should be it. Because again, the stop battle sound works in endgame. The two muting is popping up just... That, that's, that's, uh, that's normal. That, that shouldn't be affecting anything. Um... I'm just going to do a little to do why me thing right here because it is getting dangerously close to three. Maybe a typo. It wouldn't be a typo because I copied and pasted it. Like it's the exact same function. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the exact same function that I, that I put up here. Stop success sound, paste, stop success sound. And it's within the correct scope, too, because it's all right in here. So it, it doesn't make sense. Where's stop battle sound defined? Right here and right here. On lines uh, 17 and 18. Typo for the case. Case mute and unmute. But when I click the button, we're getting the muting and unmuting things logged. So it's calling the correct case. The state is being changed. So that, that isn't it. Would it help by adding a delay? What kind of delay? What are you thinking? Because yeah, stop battle sound and stop success sound, they're defined right here and they're being used just fine in these cases. So theoretically, when we hit this case, I can also call stop battle sound, and it should just work. Why do I need a Redux state? I do, uh, the state is triggering the mute and unmute that I'm uh, calling in mute button. And it's not Redux, it's, it's a reducer in React. I think my sound on got flipped. If sound is true, you want to mute it. And when you want to mute it, you want to stop the battle sound. So where do you think it's flipped? I'm not trying to like get defensive. I'm genuinely asking where you think it got flipped. Maybe you can use a print or something. That's what I'm doing with console.log right here. When I click the button, it calls the mute and unmute right here in the console, if you can't see. The button label is kind of ambiguous, sure. Sound on is true. Which is true, sound on is true when the app is first started. And then it's false. Yeah, right, what Jonesy said. Can I check if the stop battle function is run? Sure. I wonder if I can do a little thing right in here. It's debugging point. Oh, I didn't actually set a debugger properly. That's fine. Let me do. I haven't actually run the Chrome debugger in here before. 
I'm curious to see if it'll work. Okay, so that worked. Let me put the debugger one line above. Come on. Well, I don't know why that's not loading properly. Hmm. What if I closed the, oh man, my Chrome is frozen. There we go, okay. Oh, that's cute. I forget why I opened that. Oh, that was for colors, that's why. Okay, sound on is true. If I were to start it, I've got the sound playing in my headphones. Click that. Stop battle sound. Stop battle sound is a function. If I go inside of it, <gasps> no, that wouldn't be it. Okay, I gasped for nothing. Although there is an ID that's undefined there. Hmm. Although I don't, there's like, there's that ID that's undefined, which cool, that could be something, but I didn't need an ID above here when I hit this state. Have I tried another browser? One of you try it in another browser. <laughs> um, Hmm. Have I done anything particularly novel? Okay, this is me changing things. Okay, let me, because I'm getting dangerously close to my meeting time. So what I'll do is I'm gonna, gonna put that back and I'm gonna take out my logs Okay, so I'm pushing what we have so far because this is funky. Strict mode should have nothing to do with it. Um, it's going to be great when we figure this out because I'm sure it's something dumb, but I'm pushing it if you want to check it out in your own browser or poke around with it. Um, and we'll play with this again next week. Um, I am very curious to figure out what it actually is because It should work. There's nothing about this that shouldn't work. So there's something funky happening. Come on, why are you doing that? Oh, you know what? It's fine. Yeah, my Chrome, is, I can't even close this tab unless I do it with a mouse, which is weird. But anyway, I have pushed it and that is that. Um, I am now going to switch away from code view now that we have looked at it for a while. We're back, hey. Yeah, so this was a weird one. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there and it's probably going to eat at me for a long time and it'll probably end up being something stupid. But hey, that's what development is. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging on. Uh, if you wanna see my GitHub, it's github.com slash Um And that's where, that's where the repo is pushed as well. I put a link to it earlier in the chat, but if you missed it, there is that one. Um, if you find it, feel free to make a PR or something. Um, don't completely refactor because I want most of the uh, development to be here on the stream. But if you can figure out the mute problem thing, I would love to see what you come up with. Otherwise, we'll do it next week together. Um, 
But yeah, it was lovely chatting with you all. I hope you have a lovely day. Might stream Fall Guys sometime in the next few days. Um, but yeah, it was lovely chatting. And uh, I think I'm going to have us go to a raid. And so I'm going to pull that up. And until then, I'll see you next week. It was lovely chatting. Um, if you'd like to ping me, I'm on Twitter at Casadu. My Patreon uh, is a very, very fun group on Discord that's very active. So watch out for your notifications. But it's a wonderful little corner of the internet. And I hope to see you all soon. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye!